Shall I start? Great. So recall that in my last talk, talk 2.3, my goal was to embed the category of the modules on Bungie into a simpler category. So I started this grand project of embedding. The modules on Bungie into a simpler category. And what I sold you at the end of the hour was that I had this functor of putback, putback enhanced, p enhanced putback from D modules on Bungie into D modules on Bungie with the generic B reduction. And I said that this functor was, was fully faithful. Let me just remind okay, just quickly what Bungie with B generic reduction was. It was the pre stack parameterizing a G bundle, a domain, so, and uh, a reduction, a B reduction. a B reduction to of PG on you. So that was the punchline at the end of the last talk. And actually, if I had been doing the tutorial, I would have said that also we can do it instead of B, we can do it with N, the maximum unipotent. And the proof goes the same way. So let me just correct it here. And then. So my claim was that this was simpler than, than Bungie, the demodules on Bungie, and you could have complained and, said, and say, well, why? I mean, at least Bungie was an algebraic stack, and this is just a crazy guy, this. But so what's the key point that I, I didn't say last time, and which is the subject of this talk? So the key point is that here I can do free analysis. <coughs> and so in this talk, I'm going to motivate what I mean by this. And I want to ex explain that in number theory. But so if, if, if you believe me, then this must be a good idea. Because Fourier, Fourier transform free analysis has always been a good idea. And to explain this good idea, um, as I said, I, sh I should go to number theory, or better to function theory. So I need to draw an analogy in the function theory setting. <coughs> and uh, I will spend maybe something like 40 minutes on this analogy. So I know that there are some experts in the audience that know all about this. and you should take a nap, and I wake you up when I go back to geometry. So, so I find yeah. So uh, just it's just a recap of last time. I, I rewrite it. Alpha n is a reduction, an n reduction of the G bundle on U. Right, so let's now translate what we've done so far, what we did last time, into function theory. And remember that the recipe was, uh, was silly, was take a pre-stack and send it to its k value point, take d module and substitute it with uh, complex value functions. And here, since I want to do Fourier analysis, harmonic analysis, I also need to change the field. Instead of being algebraic close or characteristic zero, it's going to be a, a finite field. And I should remark that I'm no expert in this. In this setting, I use it as an analogy, as a motivation. And all the questions you might have, there are many experts in the audience that I'm sure can answer. So that's our thing. And now let's translate this functor. It becomes now an operator. So p enhanced pull back, as you can see. So uh, we saw last time, this is the vector space of automorphic functions. So 
GLK <laughs> invariant functions on G of A mod G of O. And let me just try for simplicity. So G of the ADELS modulo G of the integral ADELS, I will denote it by Grassmannian A. So I should say Grassmannian G of A. You probably forget about the G. So just to same notation, we see that in geometry that's, that's what's happening. And so this functor was just, in this setting was just forget that you were G K invariant and re just retain the NK invariance on the Grassmannian. And then we can further forget this whole NK invariant to just go to functions on Jove mod Jove O. <laughs> and what's nice about this is that I get an action. Well, let me write it again as quotient. I get an action by n of a, n of the adels. And you could object, why did I say n of a? I also have an action of the entire g of a on this. But the point is that n of a is n is unipotent, hence almost abelian. Consider so n being unipotent. It's almost a billion. I will be precise later. Or what I mean by that. But for now, let's see where. Let's let's study the case where n is exactly a billion. So for GL two, n is just the additive group G of a, and it's a billion. And so I want to now decompose this representation of a in according to Fourier. Fourier characters. So now the, the, the game is to compose functions on the Delic Grassmannian into Fourier eigenspaces. Uh, so what does it mean if, so say if n of a, I mean, let me say in the abstract setup, if n of a acts on a vector space and I have chi a character of n of a, and just keep retaining say n of a, I could just say a, but a lot of those things will carry over, so I just keep the notation like that. So what's the, say, the key Fourier, uh, the key Fourier eigenspace for the character key, or chi, is by definition <coughs> the set of V is in V such that when you act by an element of the group, you get V but with the character of n multiplied. So in particular, in our, for, our, for our representation, so, so, the, so I apply this to V being our representation, and I, I use this notation. So functions that are in a way chi invariant is just by definition those functions such that functions on the gross minus so that f of ng is equal to chi n of g. I didn't do anything. I just rewrote the definition in my, my case. So now, as chi varies, I want to study these spaces. And so first observation is that so I don't need all of the characters of the Adels of NOVA because so I'm only interested in this space. Let me give it a name. Automorphic functions. So 
So I'm only interested in this space. And this diagram tells me that any. It's not n minus 1. Where is n minus 1? Is f of n here? Whatever. Uh, maybe if you just. It's con yeah, it's convention. I mean, it's, I'm giving a definition, so depending on what I mean by that. But A is Adels. A is the Adels. So I'm referring, I used the notation of the last lecture, probably should have reminded you. But so G A is the Adels, O is the integral Adels, BK is the function field. A on the right is the Adels, I'm using a notation that I erased that okay. the Gras just because this the Adelic Grassmann. So the observation is that to describe My k and my what? And my k? The other k. They look OK. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. They have some difference, but OK. Or maybe I can erase this. This will never appear again. Or, OK. Other questions about notation and the, the grand plan? Capital K is the function field of the curve. So the usual setup. Uh, so to describe automorphic functions, that means my main object that is, will be, is the analog of d modulus on band G, you just need, you don't need all characters of N of A. You just need those characters that are trivial on n of k. Because any automorphic function is invariant with respect to n of k. So interesting Fourier coefficients can only are only those that are 0 on, on n of k. So need characters of n of a trivial on n k. And let's give this like the space a name is I call it CH. Matfrak CH. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's let's see what these characters are. Then state as a fact. For, so, uh, so remember that I'm I wanna fix now GL2. So again for G is equal to GL2, which I've done so far, I assume so far. CH is equivalent to big K function field. And this is uh, not canonical. What do I need to specify in order to make it canonical? So I need, I need two things to make this identification. First, I need an exponential. So I need a character E that moves from additive characters, namely the dual of the Adels, to C star value character. So I need a character from FQ to C star. I call this the exponential. Because in characteristic zero, later in geometry will replace will be replaced by the exponential. And two, I need uh, a meromorphic one form on X. After I do that, I have a map from functions to, to characters. So the character character of A trivial on, on K corresponding to the function will be by definition something that eats uh, um, an Adele and spits out something. So take the residue at X of 
f times the Adele at x, the component at x of the Adele, sum over all x in, in the curve. So that's an element of fq, and then exponentiate, because my characters are c, c star value. OK? So it looks like that to describe, to describe automorphic functions, I need uh, to describe the Fourier eigenspaces for any chi. Okay. So for, for, for any chi, so that's, as I said, that's equivalent to, to B, BK. So in other words, to describe automorphic functions, I can just, I can play, I need to play with a string with k worth of frequencies, but I, I just need much less, as it turns out. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, I should point out, I, I, I made this observation in order to make the residue well-defined, because the residue depends. So you have a function, a formal function, just smash it with the, the one form integrate. So that's why I needed to make this choice, otherwise the residue wouldn't be, wouldn't be defined. So the point I, I'm, I'm trying to make is that, so, so far, so good, but to describe automorphic functions, I just need those particular characters, but I need, I need actually, as it turns out, much, much less. So refinement of that observation is that I just need, again, to, this, to catch, uh, so to describe uh, automorphic functions. <coughs> and I remind you, I mean, I'm always in GL2. Huh? Um, just need two elements. of those characters, namely i.e. In, in this notation, chi naught, which is the trivial character, and in, always in that notation, chi one, so which is just the residue character, if you want. Any non, any non trivial will do. So what's the proof of this? So in other words, to describe automorphic functions for GL2, I just need to play with a keyboard with two keys. One, two, instead of a, instead of a string of, with a k, k word of frequencies. So the proof, well, the idea of the proof is to use an extra symmetry. which is, I was rough before, I said that n of a acted on functions on, on the adelic Grassmannian, but I can also refine this to, to saying that this semi-direct product of n of a with rational, um, t, the rational torus, where t is the maximal torus of our group, acts. I notice that this is useful because t of k acts on n of a preserving n of k. So it will act also on c of h. So how do I implement this observation and I, how to use it? I mean, it's worthwhile to draw a picture. So it's an abstract setup. Uh, What's my abstract setup is I have the semi-direct product of a group, semi-direct, say a vector group, because again, I'm in GL2, so I know it's just A. And this, and this M is a representation of this semi-direct product. So let me just re report it here. So we have I'm a representation of this semi-direct thing, where V is a vector group. 
then upon Fourier transforming the action of V on M, I can imagine M as fibering over V. And the fibers are the, um, the Fourier eigenspaces. And then, sorry, we check the dual. Maybe it's star. And I have an induced action of H on V, v dual, that's the dual action. And moreover, I have an action of H on M, and this H acts on the old picture. By which I mean that, um, by which I mean that Fourier eigenspaces relative to characters in the same Okay, orbits are identified. And I probably should say H here. Namely, I have I have my so this is the eigens uh, I use another notation. M of chi is the Fourier eigenspace according to to, to, to chi, and then I can identify it with the Fourier eigenspace according to the action of H on chi by, by an operator which depends on H. So the, the upshot of using this extra symmetry is that I need to look only at, at characters, at, at need to only look at characters are representative of the TK orbits on the space of characters. Let me write that. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving the proof. I'm just exploiting the symmetry to conclude that only need to look at characters at representative. in CH of TK orbit, right? So that brings me to the next question, is what are the, what are the, K orb what are the TK orbits then of, uh, of CH? And we basically, we know it already because CH was, I don't know if it, to k and then t of k acts via the it's the unique simple root. So just simple, very easy thing I'm saying is that space of characters that of n of a trivial and n of k is decomposed as follows. You have the zero character, which I called actually chi naught before, and all the rest. Let me put let me put a yeah, let me put a circle here, or maybe non-degenerate, and D for non-degenerate, so that are the non-zero characters. Right, so in particular, I take my favorite one, which is this. So the upshot for GL2 is that, let's make it the proposition now by Fourier transform is, so what do, what do I mean by the sentence to describe automorphic functions, I just need two characters. That's a precise, what follows is a precise formulation of that, is that I have the map coefficient, uh, Fourier, just the map Fourier coefficient with respect to k naught and the map Fourier coefficient with respect to chi one goes from <coughs> automorphic functions. Uh, more, more space. Goes from automorphic functions into into what? It's functions that are n of a 
chi naught invariant on the same space times functions that are n of a chi 1 invariant on the same space that's injective. So that's what Fourier transform together with this machine with the symmetry buys us. But I can actually be more precise because I haven't exploited all the extra symmetry because I have some stabilizers here. What's the stabilizer of k naught of the tk action is just t of k. And what's the stabilizer of my favorite one inside here of the tk action? So let's stabilize. That's, um, as you can check, that's the center of G <coughs> rational. So in particular, whenever I, whenever I compute those maps, which I'll describe explicitly, I just land up landing here in functions that are furthermore invariant with respect to t of k, and here in functions that are furthermore <coughs> invariant with respect to the the rational center. And by the way, so functions like this is just invariant functions. So that's what I want it to be. Let me describe actually these functor, this, this functions explicitly. Um, go here. That's a general thing. So coefficient with respect to character chi is so it takes a function on uh, whatever the domain was, and it spits out a function that is described as follows. So it takes an element of g and it sends it to the integral over n of a mod n of k, which in this case is just a mod k of the function that I had before times ng inverse character n dn. Note that I, I, I can do the integral. I do can do the integral because this guy is compact. OK, so maybe I stop here. That's like a break point and open for questions. So for GL2, this is the situation. I have my object of interest. I have two, two functions, two operations, and I land it here. And this map by the Fourier transform is injective. So Larry, this, does this depend on your, uh, on your meromorphic thing? Not, not really, because I mean I can identify everything by the torus. But um, I mean those. Like no, I mean the result doesn't. The construction does, but I mean I just ch chose this guy because I liked it. I could choose another form and choose another guy. But yeah, so chi zero doesn't depend on the. Chi zero is the trivial character. Yeah, but that one doesn't. Depend. That was that, that was just, just the this, other this zero character. Anyway, that's, that's a good point. In the when I do the geometry version of all of this, I will have to not do that. I cannot do that. I cannot fix one form, so I will have to adjust it to remove this, those choices. I will have the exponential because it will be in characteristic zero. That was the first choice I had to make. The second choice was the the form, and I will I will not do that. So I will choose all form. I, I will have to parameterize all meromorphic forms at once. But that that's for later. Now I wanna, I wanna repackage, wanna reorganize this thing for the future. I wanna reorganize this guy in just one block. So it's just a tautological reformulation. I will put it here. So define definition. 
uh, extended Whittaker functions, the space of extended Whittaker functions. is space of functions. So functions is equal to functions on the Adelica's manual, see, explicitly for once, times the character. I put the character, I put the space of characters in the domain of the functions. Satisfying two conditions, subset. Condition one is So CH for me by convention is characters of. Um, you had two conditions and, and. No, 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 I didn't. I have one condition. So I'll give the definition again. Those are right here. CH. Characters of NA trivial on N of K. Yeah, and it was. No, no, all of them. So I'm, I'm, I'm unwinding what I did in order to have, instead of a product, I want to have just one thing. And for that, I, I insert characters in the domain. So such that one is, so now it's a function that keeps, takes two inputs. So a function like that is equal to, now evaluate n with the character, you get a number, put it out. That's for any for any n in the delf. And two is functions. So now I want I have the I have the action of the rational torus. So it's diagonal. It acts by it acts by conjugation, should have said that on the characters. So a diagonal action like that does nothing. That's for any t. Okay. And so that's that's definition. And then now I rewrite I, I rewrite this proposition by saying that the extended Fourier coefficient coefficient coef x from automorphic functions. to now this space of functions, so let me give a name, Whittaker extended, is injective. So if you, it's in the notes, but if you think about it for a few seconds, or you'll see that this is exactly this, for a stupid reason that with a extended is the product of those two things. What is the second condition for the second factor of three? Sorry? Okay. Which sec this second condition for three one, why is three? Why is what? Why it fits B G or Yeah, so it's those are those are two points of view on the same space. Yeah, but so it's either the same space and then you look at characters that are so supported on zero and so so characters that are zero and on zero. That's what I did before when when I split this into two parts, or you look at so this non-degenerate one. So that's that's one philosophy and T acts preserving those orbits, or you just choose a guy here, a particular guy you like here. That's that's this philosophy. Um, this philosophy is take zero and chi one here, and you don't have an action of t, but here you have a stabilizer which is the center, as you can check. Just it's, it, I'm saying something trivial. Just work it out, and and you get equality between, between those two. But 
So now I use the Fourier transform. I need, I need my n of a to be a billion in order to make this statement. Um, or this statement. Well, I didn't write what the integral is, but you just, uh, you just, yeah, that's just for GL2. That's a motivation of the motivation. I use the Fourier transform. I, the Fourier transform tells me what to do. I use the extra symmetry, and I just need to use, for example, those two. I get those two pieces, and I have an injection. That's what the Fourier transform tells me. But now you see that nothing here. So only this bit depends on the Fourier transform. All the rest makes sense for, for arbitrary groups. So then, very ungratefully, very ungratefully, after using the Fourier transform in such a nice way, uh, we dismiss it, and we just rewrite everything, and then we'll ask if the result still holds. So that's what I'm going to do next. Uncover this guy. Now I just move on to say, so repeat, or try adapt. Adapt the story to arbitrary G reductive group. And uh, so we'll see what I need a technical condition. It will come up in a second. But so again, I don't need the Fourier transform to define either of those things. So what are just I replace what my space CH now for, for arbitrary G is just a definition again characters on N of A trivial on N of K. And so I can describe those as well because see let me let me fix some notation. So I have for G I have a, I have the, the the vertices of the Dinkin diagram parameterized by well, in bijection with a set of uh, simple roots. So simple roots or vertices of the Dinkin diagram. So then Right, so then, then R is the semi-simple rank, rank of G. What else do I have? I have, a, so I can, I can look at standard parabolics. So those are the parabolic subgroups of G that are contained in my fixed Borel subgroup. And those are, in, again, in bijection with the subsets of this guy. So subsets of subsets i p lower p of i, and then uh, also notation I need is parabolic as a levy decomposition into the product of its unipotent radical and uh, and its levy. So it's levy decomposition. So after this little digression, I can come back and describe this space. So CH, now, because you can question, so all the characters of, of N will be, will be will factor to this space, and this space is abelian, is a vector group, which is exactly a number of copies of GA, uh, just R, where R is the rank. And so I can, so, so, so using the same identification, I can say that CH is K to the power R, just one, cop, one, one, for, one K for each GA. And I can list, I can find a, decom a very nice decomposition of this, of this space of characters. According to standard parabolics, because again, a par standard parabolic is a subset of the simple root spaces, corresponds to a subset of the simple root spaces. So 
I can write it like this. Scene on the generate. Where this is characters such that that are zero on so trivial on um, on the root spaces that are not in the root spaces of parameterizing the parabolic, but defining the parabolic and non-zero else. Non-zero on the root spaces on those GAs that are in the parabolic. Great. That's, so that's what I was erasing. But so far, I'm doing functions. I'm not doing categories. Categories will come in the tutorial. I mean, afterwards. So, but yeah, the notation is what Dima, what the analog in function theory of, of Dima's uh, notation was. This, this would be the Whittaker um, of G B, and this would be Whittaker of G G. And as I said in the cover board, this Whittaker extended here is tautologically the product of those two. But that's for GL2. Now I'm, I'm headed towards a similar description for, for GLN or for, for other groups. And for that, I, I need this business with the parabolics. Because, exactly because I can stratify the characters into, into the pattern of non degeneracy according to the, the parabolics. It's not a the zero and zero. Yeah, this is a just. It's not a union. Why is it a union? If something is zero everywhere, it's not. All right, so now I need a technical point. I need to assume something about G in order to have this nice decomposition to be a decomposition into T of K orbits. So assume for the rest of the talk. That uh, the center of G is connected. That's what, that's actually the, the thing that ensures, so that ensures that this decomposition is an orbit decomposition. Uh, so our RT orbit. Um, all right. So and then, and then I can, I can repeat what I said. So I can pick, I repeat the same procedure. Pick your favorite character that I call chi p in this subspace. So it's again, it's a character which is zero on the simple root spaces that are not in the one perm defined parabolic and non-zero else. And, um, and so define what's now its Whittaker, space of Whittaker functions with GP to be functions on N of A chi P. on this space. And now I need the center of the Levy of P. Okay. If you repeat the same game, you get this. And for GL2, those, if you plug in the G or B, you obtain what, what we had before with the same notation. <coughs> now, Now actually I uncovered the board and comment on the fact that 
here this definition that I, I wrote when I was doing GL2 actually works for any group, makes sense, perfect sense for any group. And, it, and I want the assumption to be ZG connected, and I will have that um, Whitaker extended now for G. So for G. So this maybe I can put G here. That was GL2, but any G will work. <coughs> Splits us the product of, of those spaces for any standard parabolic. We have this, what I call the partial Whittaker spaces. Right? And then you have your automorphic functions. And here you have the, the extended coefficient functions, fun, uh, operator. And here you have the product of the coefficients with respect to those characters belonging to this particular space. And you have a commutative triangle like that. That's where it's induced by restrictions. So commutes. Okay, and so um, note that what I had before for GL2 automatically was that this map was inject injective. Now I don't have it anymore because I don't have the Fourier transform. But I can ask that. So the question is the extended coefficient there injective. Maybe I should ask, should ask the experts, but one answer I know for sure that for GLN, any N that's true. But GLN is very special because I have a very nice uh, subgroup. I mean, the proof is easy using the Mirabolic subgroup. that only exists for GLN, it's just subgroup of matrices with whose last row is one on the rightmost spot and zeros everywhere else. And it's a very nice group that allows induction. So I can reduce to GL2 and iterate free transforms on the columns. So that's just, I wrote some, some int in the notes. That's, for, that's the situation for GLN, but then for other groups, and I'm no expert here on this, but for other groups, this in injectivity is probably false. Perhaps false. In general, for false in general. All right, so. Um, so yeah, so that's the status. I have this guy, automorphic functions, which is the main guy of interest in, in geometric Langans on the automorphic side will be D modules on Banji. And I have a map, particularly a nice map to this space, which may or may not be injective. But if it's injective, I've realized my plan to embed D modules on Banji into something, something nice. Why is it nice? Because it decomposes into a product of of something that depends on the parabolic. And I can write what it is. If you see reaching a little bit ahead, this, this is something local except for a rational torus. So it will enter the worlds of factorizable categories later. And so if this is injective, I, I have my plan. That's, that's, once I translate this into category, into geometry, this is the answer to my grand plan. That was to embed this guy, the modules on Banji, into something nicer. The problem, however, is that this is maybe not true in number theory, in, in, the, in this set. So I know that for GLN that's true, for other groups it's false, and we'll see how it, this reflects to geometry. So now uh, it's a big break, and I pass to geometry. Yes? If it's false, 
Do you think it's false or is it false? Let's ask the expert. Yeah. Yeah, this says it's false. This is false. Yes. Yeah. So basically, the question is, uh, can you have a casting gun with your presentation? Not a very fair. Which is not generic. And run it down. Everywhere, not a very fair. Yeah, it looks like here. Yeah, I don't know any of that. Dima, so this is like a, a, a break in the talk? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Then I, I just and then I repeat everything in geometry. Okay. I mean something as much so, as I can. Uh, so this will be part of the tutorial. I mean this should be the pre-talk pre where I explain a known story and then. So 15 minutes? Great. Is it good?